previous session we started writing the test cases okay now we will go ahead and write the test cases if they don't provide you the range of the data or type of the data okay in case if they don't provide you the range of the data or type of the data then how you have to write the test cases now let's see okay how we are going to write the test cases if they don't provide you the range of the data or type of the data okay so now see here example let's say this is brs 1.2 requirement 5 1.2 requirement 5 so what is that user and uh, see here save and submit buttons save and submit save and submit buttons should be disabled save and submit button should be disabled when user enters when user enters name and address save and submit button should be disabled when user enters name and address and both the buttons should be enabled when user selects when user selects city and state in registration application and application will automatically close when user click on save and submit button save and submit buttons save and submit button should be disabled when user enters name and address and both the buttons will be enabled when user enter when user selects the city and state in registration application and application will automatically close when user clicks on save and submit button so this is the requirement they did not provide you the range of the data a type of the data they just gave you the requirement so now you have to write the test case so whenever you write a test case you have to follow this template okay so copy it paste it here okay serial number 1 brs is what this is your brs so copy it paste it here now coming to description description is what first thing is you have to launch the application so what is the application that you are going to launch here mm, application a b c d whatever the name launch. of the application is registration application am i right launch registration application see here so what would be your expected result registration application should be launched okay so the next one is what what you will do you will verify what are you verify verify whether name address city state save submit buttons are available in the application or not so verify name address city state save and submit button what to be your expected result name address city state save and submit buttons available they should be available next one is what see here save and submit button should be disabled when they will be disabled save and submit button should be disabled when 
when user enters name and address. So enter name and address. So what could be our expected result? Save and submit button should be disabled. Save and Save and submit button should be disabled. Next one is what? Both the buttons should be enabled. When they will be enabled? When user selects city and state. Select city and state. So what could be your expected result? Save and submit button should be enabled. Okay. Save and submit buttons. Enabled. And then next one is see here. Application will automatically close. When it will close, when user clicks on save and submit button. So click on save and submit button. So what would be your expected result? Registration application. automatically registration application should be closed automatically okay any questions until here one second guys okay yeah. don't see the range of the data or type of the data they don't provide you this is how we are going to write the test cases okay so you got an idea like how to write the test cases because this is the main part main thing how to write the test cases as a tester. Okay. Ma'am, I have a question. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay, so when we don't give any um, boundaries, do we still have to check uh, the uh, size of the name or like they will any give criteria? You. Let's... Rahman, they will provide you what you have to do. So whatever they are asking you, just do that one. Don't do anything extra. Okay. Okay, yeah, but definitely they will give you the range type this all they will be providing in case if they don't provide you then this is how you have to write. Okay. Okay, now coming to test data preparation. So what do you understand by test data preparation? During this phase, testing team will be involving to design the test data. Okay, so who is going to provide you the test data? We have to create it ourselves. No, basically, who is going to provide? Development team is going to provide the test. Developer, developer. If the developer is not providing you the data, then you have to prepare the test data. In case if the developer is not providing you the data, then you have to prepare the test data. That means at least they will give you the requirement like username should accept only alphabets, uh, like a password should accept only alphanumeric. So that is a requirement. If they give you any requirement, then based on that, you have to prepare the test data. Okay? Like you write all the valid conditions, invalid conditions like that. And then now coming for test case execution in a testing environment. See, when you are going to execute the test cases, only once the application is ready. Right? Once the application is being developed by the development team, then only you will go ahead and execute the test cases. So whatever the test cases you have written earlier, the same test cases you are going to execute. See here. Okay, so copy this. Paste it here. Okay, so now see here launch ABCD application. So now this is going, this you are going to execute only once the application is developed by the Okay, so launch ABCD application. So what would be your expected result? ABCD application should be launched. So what would be your actual result? It should be launched, right? So what would be your actual result? If the application is launched, that means if the application is opening, then you will write ABCD application is launched. Am I right? Yes, sir? Right. So what would be the status? If expected is same as the actual result, the status will be pass. Am I right? If expected result is same as actual result, then your status will be passed. And then next, next we go for next step. Verify name, address and save buttons in ABCD application. So if they are available, they should be available. That is what you are expecting. 
So if they are available, then what will write? Name, address, save buttons are available. Name, address, and save buttons are okay. Next one is what? Enter name as a five characters. Okay, so name should accept five characters or not? Yes, if it is accepting, then you will write here. Name accepted five characters. So name is accepting, then what will write? If the status will be passed. So if expected result the same as accepted, then the status will pass. Next one is what? Enter name as 20 characters. So if name is accepted 20, if it is accepting, then what will write here? Name accepted 20 characters. Okay, and the next one is what? Enter name as six characters. So if name is accepting, then what will write? Name accepted six characters. Next one, enter name as four characters. So if name is accepting, then what will write here? Name should not accept four characters, and the below error must appear name accepted only five to twenty characters. Next one is what? Enter name as twenty-one. So name should not accept twenty-one characters, and the below error must appear. What is that? Name should accept only five to twenty. Characters. Okay, and the next one is what enter name as 19. So if name is accepting, then what do you write here? Name should accept 19 characters. Okay, any questions until here? No, ma'am. No? Okay. Now, so whenever you whenever you are expected is not same as actually, then, then definitely your status will be paid. Am I right? Yes or no? Definitely, yes, status fail. So if it is status fail, then definitely you will find. Uh, definitely you have to go ahead and raise them as a defect. Okay. So what is a defect? So during this phase, what will happen? Testing team will be involved to report the defects to the development team. So defect means for a mismatch between the expected result of the test case with actual result in the application is called a defect. A mismatch between the expected result of the test case with actual result in the application is called a defect. So during executing the test cases, if ever we identify any mismatch between the expected result of the test case with actual result in the application, we are reporting that mismatch as a defect. So when you are raising the defects, you have to follow some defect life cycle. Very, very, very important. In every interview, definitely they will ask you, please explain me about the defect life cycle. R. Bug life cycle. Defect life cycle or bug life cycle. Now coming to defect life cycle. So what do you understand by defect life cycle? Defect life cycle means what? Defect life cycle means what? Or bug life cycle. So first thing, let's say you have a new defect. So who is going to raise the status as new? This status will be provided by the testing team while providing defect to the development team. You are going to go ahead and raise a defect to the development team. So they will go ahead and raise the status as new. See, you are a tester. You found a defect, some new defect. So what you'll do, you'll go ahead and raise the defect immediately to the development team. Okay, so whatever the defect you raise, you call it as a new defect. Okay, next one is open. So who is going to open the defect? Developer. Very good. Developer. So this status will be provided by the development team when the testing team has reported the valid defect. Okay, when they have uh, reported the valid defect, when the testing team has reported the valid defect, then only the developer will go ahead and accept. If you don't, uh, if the develop, if the testing team doesn't provide the valid defect, if he say that this, this is a defect, and as a developer they will not just blindly go ahead and accept whatever the defect, you, whatever you say. Okay, what they will do, they will go ahead and cross it whether you have raised a valid defect or not. If it's a valid defect, then they will try to open. Okay? And the next one is what rejected. So this status will be provided by the development team when the testing team has reported the invalid defect. When the testing team has reported the invalid defect and when they are working on the defect. Okay? We will just reject it. The developer, if the doesn't uh, provide a valid effect, then they will just go ahead and reject it. Okay. The next one is what? Duplicate. Du 
duplicate means the status will be provided by the development team when the testing team has reported the valid defect but already same type of defect has reported earlier so they will go ahead and raise the status as a duplicate defect okay they'll go ahead and raise the status as a duplicate defect let's say you have raised a defect saying that uh, gmail uh, gym uh, like uh, let's say uh, username is not working Ahmed also comes and uh, like Rahman also comes and says that username is not working. So if the same type of defect is raised again and again, then you call it as a duplicate defect. Then you call it as a duplicate defect. Next one is what fixed. So this status will be provided by the development team when they fix the defect in the testing environment. Okay. So this status will be provided by the development team when they fix the defect in the testing environment okay the next one is what reopen reopen means the status will be provided by the testing team the fixed defect is not working properly see you are a tester you raised a defect to the developer saying that so and so is not working so what the developer will do now he will try to fix it so once he fixed the defect is it your responsibility to go ahead and cross check whether it is working or not as a tester right yes and cross check whether it is working or not Still, it is not working. Then you will go ahead and raise the status as reopen. You will go ahead and raise the status as reopen. Okay. Next one is close. So, who is going to close the defect? Tester. Testing team. Testing team is going to close. Finally, if everything is working properly, they will go ahead and close the defect. Fixed. Who will the who will go ahead and raise the status as fixed? Developer. Once the developer fixes the defect, you will go ahead and state the status as fixed. So once it is fixed, you will go ahead and close it as a test. Okay. Ma'am, I have one question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, could you explain open and uh, reject those two phases once more? Open is uh, so if ever you find any defect. Uh, okay. So let's say you are a tester. You found a defect. So who to whom you are going to raise the defect? The de Developing team. So yes. So what the developer will do now? He will go ahead and check. Oh, okay. Did he? Did Rahman raise a valid defect or not? If they think that, oh, okay, really this is not working, then they will try to open the defect. That means they will start working on the defect. Okay, open is nothing but they will start working. That means they are accepting it as a defect and they are working on it. If they don't accept it as a defect, if they don't think whatever the defect you raise, if it is not a valid defect, then they will just reject it, saying that. This is not the defect that you raised. Okay. Did you understand? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now coming to test case execution in a UAT environment. Test case execution in a UAT environment. So until now you have executed the test cases in testing environment. So in testing environment only testing team perform testing. But here in UAT environment client along with the testing team is going to perform testing on the application. Client along with the testing team is going to perform testing on the Did you understand? Right? Now coming to that's after uh, coming to UAT, client along with the testing team is performing testing. But if ever you find any defects, you are going to raise the defects immediately to the development team. Okay, so you'll follow the same defect life cycle if ever you find any defects. Okay, now coming to regression testing. Regression means during this phase, the testing team will be involving to perform regression testing. Why? To verify whether the fix, whether the defect, whether the closed defects are impacting on the related functionalities of the defect in the application or so regression means you have to test the entire application from the beginning to check if everything is working properly or not. That is regression. That means you are going to test the entire application from the beginning to check if everything is working properly or not okay now ma'am um, in the regression testing do we have to write the test cases all over again or can we no, just uh, right. whatever the test cases you have written you have to go ahead and verify the same thing the cross check you have to do that's it there's no need, no need for you to go ahead and write it again and again okay yeah now coming to test closure 
so during this phase your project manager or test manager will be involving to sign off the testing activities during this phase your project manager or test manager will be involving to sign off the testing activities and technical team or development team will be involving to, to deploy the application into production okay they will be involving to deploy the application into production production is nothing but to use or work on the application finally so project manager will sign off the testing activities only when we executed all the test cases when all the defects are closed and when regression testing is also completed okay so sometimes project manager will sign off the testing activities even though like small small defects are open or in open status so test closure is nothing but to close the entire testing activities okay so this is all about the software testing life cycle this is all about the software testing life cycle now we go for software development life cycle models or methodologies software development life cycle models or methodologies so we have different models of sdlc available in the industry we have different models of sdlc available in the industry so based on the requirements of the client only based on the requirements of the client only we will decide which model is suitable for which project which model is suitable for which project so this will be decided by whom by the higher level management of the company along with the client this will be decided by the higher level management of the company along with the client so altogether we have seven different phases available in the software development life cycle what are they model waterfall model then prototype model then rad model spiral model model and then agile agile model so these are all the seven different models that we have the first one is v model so v model stands for verification and validation model V model stands for verification and validation model. Okay, that means see here. First, we will try to gather the requirements. Then you will have UAT. Analysis. system testing design integration testing coding and then all the different models that we have so we model stands for verification and validation model so this model is suitable for long term projects in which the clients are having stable requirements okay first we will try to go ahead and gather the requirements so who is going to gather the requirements business analyst business analyst is the one who is going to gather the requirements so once after they gather the requirements now what you have to do you have to try to go ahead and do the analysis am i right So who is going to do the analysis? Business analysis. That means what are the requirements that we get from the client? Those are like high level requirements. We can't understand those requirements. So to make those understand, they are going to do the analysis. So once after analysis is done, now we will try to go ahead and do the designing. Okay, we will try to go ahead and do the designing. So who does designing in a project? We will go ahead and try to do the designing. 
<laughs> system architect will go ahead and try to do the designing. Okay, so once after designing is completed, now you will try to go ahead and do the coding. We'll try to Ma'am, uh, when you say designing, what do you mean by it? Architect, see, if you wanted to construct a building, first you have to go ahead and design the plan of the building or not? Yes. Yes. Okay, so the same way, like to develop some application, you will say this is where my username should be, this is where my uh, sign-in should be. It means you are trying to, uh, like your, uh, the architect will go ahead and try to design the application, how it should look like. Okay, <clears throat> you understand? Yes. Yes. So now coming to coding. So after uh, after designing is completed, now we will go for coding. So who does coding in a project? Developer. Developer is the one who can go ahead and do the. Developer team. Okay. So once coding is completed, now we will try to go ahead and do the unit testing. So what do you understand by unit testing? Unit testing. Unit testing. That means during this phase, development team will be involving to perform unit testing. Why? To verify whether every individual module is working properly or not. Verify whether every individual module is working properly or not. Because if every individual module is working properly, then what will do? Will integrate. You see, you have this Bank of America application, okay? See, so all the modules are working properly. Then what you will do? You'll bring up all the modules together to make it as a single application called Bank of America application. Am I right? Yes, sir. Yes. You'll bring up all the modules together to make it as a single application that is called Bank of America application. Okay? And then next one is what? Integration. Integration means what? During this testing, both the development team and testing team will be involving to perform integration testing. Why? To verify whether the flow between one module to another module in the application is working properly or not. So this is the flow. The flow between one module to another module in the application is working properly or not. Because if the flow is not working, then there is no use, right? So you have to check whether each and every module is working properly or not. That means whether it is moving from one page to another page. Like one module to another module. That means the flow between one module to another module in the application is working properly or not. That is called integration testing because sometimes a flow may, it may flow, like the flow may work or may not work. So that is the reason you have to do integration testing. Okay. And then next one is what? System testing. System testing means? System testing. That means in this phase, a testing team will be involving to perform testing on the application. How? By executing the by executing the test cases with the help of the test data. By executing the test cases with the help of the test data. So testing team is performing different types of testing. What are they? Sanity, usability, functionality, security, so all the different types of testings we are going to perform on the application. Okay, that is called system testing. So after successful completion of executing of all the test cases, then all the defects are closed. Then they will go ahead and move into UAT. UAT means what? User acceptance testing. Yes, UAT means user acceptance testing. That means the client along with the testing team is going to perform testing on the application. Client along with the testing team is going to perform testing on the application. So after successful completion of executing of all the test cases, when all the defects are closed and when regression testing is also completed, then development team will deploy that application into production. Production means what? Production means what? Production means submitting to the client. Yes, production is nothing but you'll go ahead and submit your comments to the client. So that everyone can go ahead and 
lose it. Okay? So I told you V model stands for verification and validation. Verification means what? Verifying the, uh, the requirements and... Uh, verification is nothing but the process to verify whether we are following the right process or not. Okay? Verification is nothing but the process to verify whether we are following the right process or not while developing and testing the application. Validation means the process to verify whether we have developed the right application or not. Whether we have developed the right application or not. Okay, so this is the model. So remember, the model stands for verification and validation and it is suitable for long term projects. At least if the project is for like three years or four years, then only we go ahead and use this V model. Okay, now coming to waterfall model. What do you understand by waterfall model? model is suitable for short term projects in which the clients are having limited budget. That means the client is having very, very less budget here. And the project can be either for like six months or eight months or one year. So it is suitable only for short term projects. So in this model, first the development activity, uh, testing activities will start only after completion of the development activity. So first what they are going to do is they are going to gather the requirements. After they gather the requirements or what they are going to do they are going to do the analysis they are going to do the analysis so once analysis is done now you will try to go ahead and do the design okay so once after designing is done now you will try to go ahead and do the coding okay so once after coding is completed you will go ahead and do the testing and then finally you will go ahead and release and maintain the application. Uh, there is no uh, integration testing in this. Uh, you will have no, nothing you will have. Requirement analysis, design, coding, testing and finally releasing and maintaining the application. Okay. So first you will try to gather the requirements. The business analyst will try to gather the requirements. So once after the requirements are gathered, then what you will do? You will try to go ahead and do the analysis. Am I right? You try to go ahead and do the analysis. So once analysis is done, now you will try to hire an architect who can go ahead and do the design. Because see, everyone, you can't go ahead and hire all the team members at a time. Because this is the less coding project. The, code, uh, the project budget is very, very less. So after like each and every activity only, you will try to hire like whomever you require. So after uh, analysis is done, now the they will try to hire an architect who can go ahead and try to do the designing. So once after designing is completely done, now they will go ahead and try to do the coding. So who does coding in a project? Developer. Very good. Developer is the one who is going to go ahead and do the coding. Okay, so once after coding is completed, now they will try to hire a testing team who can go ahead and try to test the application. Who can go ahead and try to test the application. So once after testing is completed, what you do is you will finally go ahead and this and maintain the application. Okay, design and maintaining is like how you have to go ahead and this and maintain the application. So who is going to do the maintenance? Maintenance means they have a team, like whoever is going to release application, they like they will have a separate team, like maintenance team. See, Facebook application has been developed long back. Are they still maintaining it or not? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, they're so who is maintaining? Uh, okay. Yeah, they have a separate team called maintenance team. Okay. Our support team also. Support team also goes ahead and maintains the application. 
the this, this testing team is recruited by the project or the client it's like the client or the implementation Pardon? Uh, it will be maintained by either your project manager or your client. Oh, okay. Okay. Any other question? No, that's fine. Any questions until here? No, ma'am. No? Okay. So revise until here, guys. I'll send you the recording. Yesterday's recording did you get or no? Yes, I got it. Okay. Yeah, I'll convert this recording and I will send it to you. So just revise your recording. If ever you have any questions, we'll discuss in tomorrow's class. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you guys. Yeah. Bye.